Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Binford and I'm going to be walking you through the registration process for the 24-25 school year. Hopefully by now you already have in front of you a registration guide sheet based on which year you're going to be next year. So current ninth graders, you should have a light purple sheet for 10th grade registration. Current 10th graders, you should have a yellow sheet for your junior year registration. And current 11th graders, you should have a blue sheet for your senior year registration. These will help you as you plan out the classes you're going to take next year and should help guide you as you input your elective courses into PowerSchool. On the following slides, I'm going to walk you through the registration process, but please know we will also post this PowerPoint for you to reference um, on the Grandview website, and it'll also be posted in the registration folder on your uh, class seminar Schoology pages. So if you're a, a current freshman, you will go to Freshman Seminar Schoology, and then you will see a registration folder, and in that folder, um, this PowerPoint will be located. So you can certainly reference every Everything I'm talking about in those locations. So the registration process, today you're going to be getting information on registration and all of the different class offerings. Um, you will then be communicating with your teachers and your parents about the courses you'll be taking next year and hopefully those uh, conversations with your teachers have already started and they are the ones who will be um, helping you select your core classes for next school year. Then no later than February 5th, you're going to finalize your elective decisions and enter all of your courses into PowerSchool. There will be a detailed video for how to do that in case you need a refresher with how to put your classes in PowerSchool. And again, that video will be posted on your Seminar Schoology pages in the registration folder. Okay, so before we go on to the registration process, it's important that you understand the graduation requirements in order to graduate from Grandview High School. I'm going to go over the Cherry Creek School District requirements first, and then there is also the college entrance requirement um, column on the far right. So in order to graduate from Grandview, um, all students must have four years of English, three years of social studies, but the social studies is divided into a couple different categories. One and a half credits is general social studies, a half credit is government, and that's typically taken during the junior or senior year, and then U.S. history is typically taken during your junior year. Math is three years to graduate, and science is also three years to graduate, but please note that on the right, far right-hand column where it talks about college entrance requirements, most colleges do require four years of math, and then many require three to four years of science, so please be aware of that, and you'll of course want to check on the college websites to make sure that you are taking um, what you need to be admitted to your um, college or colleges that you're applying to. World language is not required to graduate from a, grand, from a Cherry Creek School District high school. However, we do encourage all students to take a world language um, as many colleges and universities require that students have at least um, between two and three years um, for admissions requirements. Practical Fine Arts is a year and a half or one and a half credits um, and this is the subject area or category that really encompasses all of the electives that are not world language or physical education. There are a couple of outliers, but basically most of your electives are going to fall into this practical fine arts category. So a couple of these include all of your computer science classes, technology, um, visual arts like uh, pottery or I'm sorry, ceramics and drawing and painting, um, performing arts like theater and choir, um, consumer and family sciences, all those courses that you typically um, think of as your elective courses they will probably fall into practical fine arts. Also, courses taken at CCIC um, fall into the practical fine arts category. Physical education is one and a half credits. That's three physical education classes. Um, health is a half a credit. So please note that health is separate from physical education. So it's one and a half of PE and then a half a credit of health for graduation. Um, the last category of other is five and a half credits and you don't need to really worry about that. That is where anything that you take above the bare minimum in, a, in 
any of the categories above, that's where that falls to get you to the total of 22 credits. For example, your fourth year of math, your fourth year of science, any world language, um, any PE you take above and beyond three courses, all of those courses fall into that other category. Um, and that's how we get to the grand total of 22 credits. And again, you'll want to check college websites to make sure that you are also taking classes that are required um, for admissions into the colleges that you are thinking about. In addition to the required credits needed for graduation, the state of Colorado has also put in place um, proficiency requirements for English and mathematics for all students to show. Um, there is a menu of ways to show this on the left hand column um, and most students will show proficiency in English and math through taking an ACT or SAT test and meeting the benchmark scores. Um, for students who don't meet those benchmark scores, we will work with you to make sure that you do reach the benchmarks in one of the other categories um, through a concurrent enrollment class or an ASVAB test or a capstone test. So you don't need to worry about this so much, but it's important that you are aware that there is an additional requirement um, above and beyond the requirements needed in the specific subject areas. And if you have any questions or concerns about this, you can certainly reach out to your counselor and we will help you um, and make sure that you are meeting these benchmarks as well. So in order for the registration process to go smoothly for you, there, here are a couple of important things to keep in mind. You want to review the course guide on the Grandview website. Um, and it's also posted on Schoology. As I mentioned, there'll be a registration folder in your seminar classes where we will also put the registration guide. Please read the course descriptions, especially of the elective classes you might be interested in taking. Many elective classes do have prerequisites, so you want to make sure that you are meeting those prerequisites before you register for a class. It's also important to understand um, what the specific elective classes involve to make sure it's an interest of yours and that it's a class that you would like to take. You'll talk with your core teachers about which courses they are recommending for you and those conversations should be ongoing. Um, they probably started a little bit ago um, and they will continue on throughout the registration process. Your teachers are a great resource for you to talk about which courses um, you should take next year. You'll also be required to choose alternate electives. We always tell students that you very well may get these. We are a large high school. We can't always guarantee that students get their first choice elective. So you will be required to choose three alternate electives and you'll want to make sure those are courses that you are willing to take. So read those course descriptions um, because you may very well um, end up with one of your alternate or one or more of your alternate elective classes next year. Think about balance. What does your life look like outside of high school? What are you involved in? How busy are you? Um, how rigorous of a course load are you willing to take? Um, do you work outside of school? Um, balance is very, very important. So think about that um, as you are planning out your courses for next year. And we say this every year, no schedule changes. Please read your course descriptions, understand what you are getting into when you take a class. Um, we want to make sure that we have a smooth process for registration and we have enough course offerings for you so please um, no schedule changes in the future. Some important numbers to be aware of. This slide is for um, current freshmen and sophomores. So for students going into 10th and 11th grade next year, you must enroll in a minimum of six credits. Please know that might be or very well likely may be more than six total classes. You want to add up the ones for year long classes and the 0.5s, which are your semester long classes. Um, you'll add up the ones and 0.5s to equal a minimum of six. You may take six and a half and you may take seven credits as well, but the bare minimum is six. You'll want to take a minimum of four core classes. That's English, science, math, and social studies. And you'll also make, want to make sure that you choose three alternate electives. Current juniors, for your senior year next year, you must take a minimum of five and a half credits. Five and a half credits actually ends up being six classes first semester 
and five classes second semester. So seniors will have two off hours first semester and can have up to three off hours second semester. Seniors can elect to take more, of course. Um, you can take five and a half credits, you can take six, six and a half, or even up to seven credits if you'd like to. But just know the minimum is five and a half credits. Uh, six classes will be first semester and five classes will be second semester. Seniors also must take a minimum of four core classes and also choose uh, three alternate electives. The next couple of slides I'm going to go over are the flow charts for the four core subject areas, English, Social Studies, Math, and Science. This first one here is English, and again, as I said earlier, your teachers are going to be your best resource for deciding which class you're going to take next year. Um, current freshmen and current sophomores will choose a year-long English class. Current juniors, you, for senior year, you may end up taking a year-long class if that is AP English Literature. Otherwise, you will need to make sure that you work with your teacher to select two semester English classes. One will be a writing course and one will be a literature course. So seniors, please make sure if you are not taking AP English Literature that you select a writing class and a literature class. And your English teacher will again help you um, to talk about which class is most appropriate. And also you can read the course descriptions in the course guidebook. Here is the social studies flow chart for you. And again, you can find your current grade and look down and see what options you have for the following year. Again, there are a lot of offerings in social studies and you'll work with your teacher to find out what um, the best course will be for you for next year. Please remember that you need to make sure that you are taking government at some point, typically junior or senior year. And again, current sophomores registering for junior year will most likely take um, U.S. history, either AP U.S. history, CP U.S. history, or the concurrent enrollment U.S. history class, and your teacher will discuss with you which will be most appropriate. Here is the math flow chart for you, and again, you can find your current class on here, and then uh, look to see which class is appropriate for you to take next year. And lastly, here is the science flow chart. Again, you can find your current class on here and follow the flow chart down to see what the next appropriate class would be. Oftentimes, there are a couple different choices that you can take next year, and those conversations um, with your current teacher will be very helpful in determining um, the best course for you for the next school year. Okay, so I am going to have Mrs. Hobbs take over from here, and she will finish off the rest of the registration presentation. Thank you, Ms. Benford. So I am Mrs. Hobbs, another one of the counselors, and now that we have talked about your core courses, let's talk about world language. Like Ms. Benford said, many colleges require two to three years of the same foreign language. So most colleges want at least two years. Some colleges, such as CU Boulder, want three years. And then if you're looking at highly selective colleges, a lot of them want at least four years to make you get competitive for admissions. Aside from the fact of college admissions, studying a world language also improves your vocab and helps you with those SAT scores. So when you're thinking about junior year and taking the SAT, it can really improve your language and your vocab for those tests. If you are a student who is wanting to go right into the workforce after high school, or for anyone just having a job at any time, um, it's a marketable skill as far as having a second language on your resume automatically puts you above other candidates. It also builds understanding and cultural competency, so it gives you some perspective and some knowledge on different cultures. And if you did not know, Grandview offers several world languages, including American Sign Language, Chinese, French, German, and Spanish. Practical Fine Arts, I know Ms. Benford talked a lot about this in the graduation requirement slide. So again, just a reminder, when you are thinking of registering, try and think of the classes you have already taken up to this point. Make sure that you either already have your one and a half credits of Fine Arts or you have a plan to get them. Again, it shows on this slide what categories count as Practical Fine Arts. 
And keep in mind that there are some colleges that require two semesters or one year of a fine art. Now, when they require that, they are talking about specific art classes. So our practical fine art requirement includes business, computer science, all of that. When they're talking about a fine art, they are specifically looking at something that you would typically call an art class. Um, so that would be a performing or visual arts. The, Class or the colleges that usually require this are the UCs in California. They want to see that one year. So that would be either a full year of a class such as choir or band or orchestra or two semesters of the same fine art. So drawing and painting one, drawing and painting two, photography one, photography two, etc. Those classes, the semester ones, do not have to be taken at the same year or consecutively, as long as you get both of them done by the time you graduate, that counts for those schools. So again, it's not a lot of schools that require this, but we have a lot of students who like to go to California, and that is one of the major college markets that do require it. Um, and then also with the practical fine arts and your electives, it's a great way to start exploring career options. So keep in mind, if you are someone who wants to go into business major, make sure that you are using your time here to take some of those classes and get one a head start and some knowledge prior to going to college but also find out if it's something that you actually enjoy so taking an intro to business or an entrepreneurship class if you want to go into that field is a great idea pe and health you guys we've talked about this already but just remember getting those three PE classes in. If you played one season of a Granby sport, you can get half a credit of PE waived. Keep in mind, you can only do this once. So even if you play football all four years, or if you play multiple sports in one year, you can still only waive half a credit, which means you are still left taking two PE classes. If you did marching band, you just need to do two seasons of that, and then you can also complete the PE waiver form. To do this, just come see your counselor. We'll give you a form. You'll get signatures from your coach and your parent, and then bring it back to us, and we will get it on your transcript. And then again, health is a graduation requirement. This is a class that is usually taken sophomore year, so if you are a freshman listening to this, it's probably a good idea that you sign up for that for sophomore year. If you have not taken health yet and you are a junior or a senior, um, please make sure to get that in. Now you can do that here at school or there are some online options you can talk to your counselor about. CCIC, so the application is now open. The deadline to complete this is March 8th and it is not time stamped. So as long as you complete the application by March 8th, you have the same chances as everybody else of getting in. The important part to think about when you are registering for classes is that if you did do the application or you plan to do the application for CCIC, still register for your Grandview classes as though you are not getting in. So you want to pick enough classes to meet the minimum requirements without CCIC. Then we will find out in April if you got in and if you did, your counselor will reach out to you and figure out which classes you want to drop to make room for CCIC. So again, register as though CCIC does not exist. The Web links on this page, again, you can access this in the Schoology folder and click on these, but if you want a direct link to the CCIC application, to the descriptions, and then there's also a video tour you can check out. Some additional CTE options in the district. Uh, we have cosmetology and aesthetics, so that is a class for juniors and seniors can take. Um, it is a pretty intense class. It does meet every single day, so it's something that you definitely want to meet with your counselor about to make sure that you can fit it into your schedule and still get your graduation requirements. To sign up for this class, you do still need to do the CCIC application, but know that those classes are not at CCIC. They're actually at uh, Inglewood's Fine, or Colorado's finest high school in Inglewood. So um, again, meet with your counselor. There's also an information session at the Colorado's finest high school that you need to attend before you can apply. Future educator, that is another thing that you would need to complete the CCAC application for. Future educator is for students who want to go into education. So want to be a teacher, it's a great program. You can earn a considerable amount of college credits through that. You also get to work with a teacher at one of our district elementary schools. Um, and then there's some benefits as far as some help with paying for college and guaranteed interview when you return to look for a job in Cherry Creek. 
Uh, and then internships and apprenticeships. So we do have internships and apprenticeships available in the district. These are mainly for juniors and seniors, but there are also some apprenticeships that are open for 10th graders. If you are interested in this, the, there is a job board that is going to have everything on it for you to apply, and that is going to open February 1st. So we will send the link out on Schoology to let you guys know, but you can look at that job board and fill out applications if you're wanting an internship or an apprenticeship. All right, Cherry Creek Elevation Online High School. So we do allow students to take up to two courses each semester at Elevation as a part-time student. So that means you are still a Grandy student, you still have your minimum class requirements here, but you are also taking extra classes through Elevation Online. Please keep in mind that the Elevation courses do not count towards your minimum. So it's not gonna give you extra off periods if you do an Elevation course. This is mainly for students who either want to fit in more into their schedule um, than time allows, or students who are doing credit recovery or trying to advance for a specific reason. Common in cor courses that students will take um, are personal fitness to get, again, to get PE requirements, health, government. Um, however, you can take anything that is in their course guide. This QR code on this page, if you guys want to scan that, that is a link to a Google form that you need to fill out if you are interested in taking a course next year through Elevation. So again, this is not for students who want to go there full time. This is simply if you want to take one or two courses each semester for Elevation, please fill out this Google form. Spots are not guaranteed. We only get a limited number of slots. So once you fill out this Google form, we will let everyone know it, whether or not um, they were enrolled in the class. We will also post this QR code and the link to the Google form on Schoology. So if you have not scanned it right now, you can get it then. So now that we've gone over how to pick your classes, let's talk about how to input these onto PowerSchool. If you log into PowerSchool, you're going to select class registration on the left. This link will be active as of today. Once you're in there, you'll see the subjects listed. You will see the pencil icon to the right. So for example, for English, you will click the pencil and up will pop the English classes that are available for your grade level. Keep in mind, the core classes, you're picking one from each, but the rest of the electives only select classes from the sections that you are wanting to take classes in. So you do not need to enter a selection for every single elective category. Again, just the ones that where the classes you want to take are contained. So again, once you click on that pencil, a pop-up window will come up. You can then select the class that you want, and then you're going to click OK. Please don't forget, you need to select your alternate elective. So this is at the bottom, it's in red. It will not let you submit without this, but to do that, you will click the pencil and you will select the three alternate classes that you want. Please do not have your alternates be the same classes that you selected above, they should be different. And then once you're done and you click Submit, you will get a screen that looks like this. It'll lay out everything that you chose, how many total credits you have will be listed here. Keep in mind, advisory is on there, so that's where you get that 0.25. That'll automatically be on there for every student. And then it'll have your alternate electives. The alternate electives are listed in alphabetical order. Unfortunately, there is no way to rank them, so that is how they come out in the computer. All right, so let's review the registration timeline one more time. Today, you received the information, and again, everything that you need if you want to reference back is on Schoology in your seminar page. Your next steps is to finalize the courses that you want to take, and the registration sheet that is in front of you will be a really good planning tool for you, so you can see everything on one page and map out your total credits. And then by February 5th, we want you to have your courses entered into PowerSchool. So again, this is coming up pretty soon. This is Monday. So if you have extra time in advisory today, 
Otherwise, you can work on it um, at night or this weekend. Make sure you're talking to your parents as well so they know what you're signing up for. But then go ahead and enter those courses into PowerSchool. Make sure you submit. Again, if you do make a mistake, this can be changed when counselors come into your classroom. So we will be coming into your science class on February 7th and 8th, depending on if you have an A day or B day science class. And we will be checking your course recommendations and registration in PowerSchool. So again, if you submit something, you can go back and change it. But again, we will check things. If you have questions, we can fix them at that time. All right, so that is the end of our registration PowerPoint. So hopefully you guys feel like you are in a good spot to register for classes. If you need help, we are holding help sessions both tomorrow and Friday. So that's February 1st and 2nd. We will be in the cafeteria. We'll have a table set up with counselors, both lunches, both days. So if there's any questions as far as which class you should take, what graduation requirements you need, how to input your classes into PowerSchool, anything along registration lines, please stop down and any, of, any one of us can assist you. It doesn't have to be your specific counselor. We also will have the counselor from CCIC there with us. So if you have any questions on the CCIC application or what classes are, what happens in different classes, she can answer those questions for you. So again, come down if you need help tomorrow and Friday during both lunches. All right, well, that is all we have for you guys. So if there is any extra time, you can start filling out your registration sheets, or if you're ready to start entering into PowerSchool, you can do that as well. And we will see you guys next week in your science class.